Good morning. It's your authorized version of the scriptures. I'm going to start this video out uh, with one verse of scripture. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and turn with me to the 22nd proverb. I'm going to read just one verse to start. The 22nd proverb. Verse 6. You are expected to follow me along. Okay? Proverbs chapter 22, verse 6. This channel is not monetized. I do not have a thousand subscribers. And I will never monetize anything that is here on YouTube. Nothing at all. I am against monetization. If you watch a video associated with this channel and you see ads on it, that is not my doing. That is YouTube forcibly putting ads on these videos. It is not my doing. Okay? Proverbs chapter 22 verse 6. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. Well, how do you train up a child? Who trains up a child? With what do you train up a child? Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he is old, he will not depart from it. I'm going to be using several resources in this video. Covered this before, kind of, but this one is going to be specifically for you kids out there. Now, when I say kid, I don't mean a baby goat. I'm 46 years of age, going to be, Lord willing, 47 this year. You youngins. Youngins, teenagers, those of you who are in your early 20s. This video is directed toward you. The scripture tells us to train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now today in this society... Especially, I'm using America as the base, for example. Um, feminism is rampant in my country of America. Feminism. Um, get rid of daddy and let the mother raise the children. I was raised by my mother. Several brethren I know were raised by their mothers. But see, of those brethren... They came on to their father, the Lord Jesus Christ, by him, guiding them on to him. But see, you take the father out of the equation. Very dangerous. And what happens is, someone might come along in a young person's life who seems to be an elder. Who is full of supposed, supposed wisdom patience, nurture. you got to be careful. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Here's one of my resources I'm going to be reading to you. You see this? All right. This is what I'm going to be reading you in this book. I do not have this marked with yellow, but between my two fingers here, okay? Go ahead and pause that and read it. Between my two fingers over there, okay? This is on page four of this book. We alone Worship they to the men of high standing. We the Jesuits 
alone follow the right way as to the instruction of youth. We alone can bring them into a properly submissive frame of mind. How do they do that? Hmm. We alone can instill into them that veneration for religion and for the state. Worship of religion. Not relationship. Religion. And for the state. The state that they live in? No. The state of the Vatican. The Vatican. Because you, have, you must remember, dear young man, dear young woman, okay? Onto the Catholic slash Jesuit. Their main loyalty is onto the Pope, to the Vatican. Okay, they are dual citizens, where in whatever nation they live, and the Vatican. But their loyalty comes first to the Pope and the Vatican. Don't forget that. They are not submissive unto the Word of God. No, they are submissive, submissive unto the dictates of of the Black Pope. Arturo Sosa, the most dangerous man on the face of this earth. <clears throat> Let's, let me reread that again. We alone can instill into them the veneration for religion and for, and for the state that can thereby cause the Popish priesthood and royal despotic power to prosper. Wherever, however, our colleges and seminaries do not flourish, wherever hitherto instruction has been entrusted to religious bodies other than ourselves, there has appeared the poison of heresy. And with this, the spirit of political disturbance the essence of conspiracy and of rebellion itself. So what that what they're saying is because we're not there, because the, those, the Jesuits, are not there, that's why they're having all kinds of problems. But Jesuitism, Catholicism, is the source of the problem. And what is Catholicism and Jesuitism? Satanism. Look at Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. Young man, young woman, a elder Christian has come miraculously to help guide you and nourish you in the faith. Really? Really? And what makes you believe that? Oh, because they can utter certain words to prove something? Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah chapter 23. Jeremiah chapter 23. Verses 16 on verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 16 on verse 22. Please. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. They speak a vision out of their own heart, because God knows their heart, remember, and not out of the mouth of the Lord. See, someone who prophesies today is someone who speaks through the Holy Ghost and the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, is that spirit through the scriptures. Okay? They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord has said, 
he shall have peace. And they say unto every one that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. Does that sound familiar, young man and young woman? Hmm? Some elder Christian has come across your path miraculously to help guide you and nourish you. What are they teaching you? Hmm? How are they nourishing you? For who has stood in, in the counsel of the Lord and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord has gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days, ye shall consider it perfectly. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. Here's what you need to consider, young man, young woman, about the so-called Christians who are elders, who have been Christians for years. Here's something you need to consider. Verse 22. But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, his words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. You know, the fear of the Lord, that is wisdom, and to depart from evil is understanding. Tell me something. Young man, young woman, tell me something. Are these Christians who are your elders, who you look upon as your elders? Are they admonishing you through the scriptures? Hmm? Are they admonishing you, giving you an example of understanding to, to, to depart from evil? Hmm? Uh, about verse 22, look at verse 22 again. But if they had stood in my counsel and, and had caused my people to hear my words, then they should have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119, please. Please. Don't believe what I'm saying to you. Follow me along in the scriptures. Psalm 119. Mem. Psalm 119, Mem. What is Psalm 119, Mem? Beg your part. Verses 97 under verse 104. Go there. Quit looking at me. Get your nose in the book. Okay? Oh, how I love thy law. Do those whom you look to, young man, young woman, admonish you through the scriptures? Now, granted, they are uh, the people that you are looking to as elders and teachers and stuff. They are not to replace the Holy Ghost who will guide you into all truth. No. But God will use men. Okay? God will use men. But pay attention to this in Psalm 119. Okay? Pay attention to this. Oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. Through thy commandments, 
though, excuse me, thou through thy commandments have made me wiser than mine enemies, for they are ever with me. Remember, wisdom is to fear of the Lord. The enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, do not fear him. They fear the Pope, the black Pope, Arturo Sosa. Okay? That's who they fear. They do not fear our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. Okay? Verse 99. I have more understanding than all my teachers. Why is that? Because if you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you have God the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and the Lord is that spirit dwelling within you, young man, young woman. Okay? Remember that. For thy testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. You look throughout the entirety of Scripture, the example that we are to learn from. Romans chapter 15, verse 4. You look it up, okay? You look at how Israel was brought up, backslid, rebuked and chastened and corrected, brought up, backslid, rebuked, chastened, and corrected, brought up. You see that throughout the entirety of Scripture. Look at the Judges. Look at the book of Judges. Look at what happened in the books of First and Second Kings. First and Second Chronicles. I, I understand more than the ancients because I keep thy precepts. I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy word. Don't watch television. Don't listen to worldly, evil, satanic music. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, throw away them video games. Don't be like the world. Read the scriptures, the authorized version of the scriptures. Uh, you know, Roman Catholicism is Mystery Babylon, the great, you know, the one talked about in Revelation chapter 17. Uh, you know, you ought to... Um, Align your life according to the scriptures, especially in the Pauline epistles, which is doctrine written for us today. Okay, look at this. Okay, verse 101, I have refrained my feet from every evil way that I might keep thy, thy word. Why is that? Verse 97, oh, how love I thy law. It is my meditation all the day. And then when you hold your place here, okay, and you go back to Jeremiah chapter 23, okay? Jeremiah chapter 23, verse 22, okay? But if they had stood in my counsel and had caused my people to hear my words, then should they have turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. Young man, young woman, as a Christian elder come upon you in your life miraculously and they're not admonishing you to refrain your feet from evil and saying, hey, pray unto the Lord, ask him to reveal truth to you through the scriptures. Is that what they're doing for you? As an elder of the church of the living God? Verse 102 in Psalm 119. I have not departed from thy judgments, for thou hast taught me. 
How sweet are thy words unto my taste. Yea, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through thy precepts I get understanding. Therefore I hate every false way. Now, look at Psalm 119 here. Uh, mem, okay? This is called Mem. This little bracket is called Mem, okay? It's uh, verses 97 on to verse 104, okay? How shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word? Okay? Through thy precepts, verse 104, don't look at me. Through thy precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Or are the ones who you look to, Christians, right? Are they doing this to you? Uh, Isaiah chapter 29, verse 13. <laughs> Catholics. Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near me with their mouth, Isaiah 29, verse 13, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me. But they say that God knows their heart, right? Yeah, he sure does. And their fear toward me is taught by the precept of men. And here in Psalm 119, Mem 104, through thy precepts, I get understanding. Therefore, I hate every false way. Roman Catholicism, and all her despicable coadjutors. Go to Romans chapter 16. Don't, don't look at me. Look at the book. Look at the scriptures. Look at the scriptures. Okay. This is what your life, young man, young woman, this is what your life is to be centered around, the scriptures. Okay? You learn of our Lord through the scriptures, not through your feelings, not through your experiences, but through the scriptures <laughs> when you adhere your life to this, will surely guide you into experience. Absolutely. But you fix your life here to conform to this and not the precepts of men. Romans chapter 16, verses 17 on to verse 18. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Good words and fair speeches. In other words, flattery. I, I don't trust a man who doesn't got any fire in him. Not even just a little bit. Don't trust them. There are some out there who are always so nice and no fire in them. But their fire comes out against those who are truly of the church of the living God. Well, all the long targeting you young people. Why are they targeting you young people? 
We're going to get into that. Because you, young people, unless you come to the Lord Jesus Christ broken and contrite and believe on him and in your brokenness and fear of the Lord, you cry out to him that the Lord may save you. Unless you come to the Lord on his terms, you're the ones who are going to be left behind. Your generation, young man, young woman, is who the Jesuits are after. And is it, is it a coincidence that they send to you <laughs> Christian elders who are so pious, so sweet, so innocent, wouldn't hurt a fly, wouldn't use a fly swatter to hurt a fly, they might use a baseball bat, But yeah, they're so sweet. They're so innocent, aren't they? Yeah. There's some of you young people's age brackets who get what's going on, but don't care. They want that power. But for those of you who do not, who are being duped, this is what this, this, it's you, this video is for. You understand? Titus. Titus chapter one. Titus chapter one. Fifteen and sixteen. Unto the pure, all things are pure. But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God. Oh, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Jesus is the Lord. But in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Yeah. Go to Psalm chapter 12 now. Go back to Psalm chapter 12. Psalm 12. Somebody's got to speak up about this and who's doing it somebody's got to speak up to you kids you youngins because the Jesuit order and all her coadjutors are sending out their agents posing to be Christians posing to be King James Bible believing Christians. But they are not adhering to the scriptures and they are not of the church of the living God. A distinction, difference. They don't care about you. No. What they care about is making you an enemy to the Lord Jesus Christ by their fair shoe of their facade, their fake piousness, their fake humility. Beware, young man, young woman. Beware. Who's telling you this? Oh, they, yeah, they're telling you about uh, people who are actually of the church of the living God. But, but no, a lot of people want to get a notch in their belt, don't they? Don't they? No, no. Psalm 12, verses 1 on to verse 4. Help, Lord, 
for the godly man ceaseth, for the faithful fail from among the children of men. The faithful fail <coughs> from among the children of men. Why is that? They speak vanity every one with his neighbor, with flattering lips. And with a double heart do they speak. A double heart. Oh, kind of like having a dual citizenship, one in whatever nation they're in, but their heart really belongs unto the Vatican. <laughs> Trying to walk both sides. There is no option to see. What side are you going to be on? The Lord shall cut off all flattering lips. He does it every time. And the tongue that speaketh proud things. Who have said, with our tongue we will prevail. Our lips are our own. Who is Lord over us? Their lips are their own. Their tongue. Read the book of James about what our Lord has to say about the tongue. I'll go to Proverbs chapter 5. Proverbs chapter 5. <coughs> Proverbs chapter 5. Verses 1 under verse 13. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding. Job 28, 28. Your job as the church of the living God. To fear the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. My son, attend unto my wisdom, and bow thine ear to my understanding, that thou mayest regard discretion, and that thy lips may keep knowledge. That thy lips may keep knowledge. Are you counting ceiling tiles because they come in with flatteries, puffing you up? Just pouring over you compliments. Oh, I see a great future for you. Hmm? All the while, seeking to make you an enemy of our Lord Jesus Christ. Children, get away from these people. If you are truly saved, Young man, young woman, church of the living God, if you are truly saved, those of you who are that young, put, put some distance, put yourself wherever you are, just you and the Lord, and you seek him, and have him reveal these things to you through the scriptures. For the lips, uh, Proverbs 5, verse 3. For the lips of a strange woman drop as an honeycomb. Her mouth is smoother than oil. Strange woman. A strange woman? Who might that strange woman be? I'll give you 50 guesses, and the first 49 don't count. She happens to be a mother, a mother of harlots and abominations of the earth. For the lips of a strange woman drop as in honeycomb, and her mouth is smoother than oil. Like all of Satan's ministers, the ministers of righteousness, remember? 
But are they admonishing you in the fear of the Lord and to depart from evil? But her end is bitter as wormwood, sharp as a two-edged sword. Her feet go down to death. Her steps take hold on hell. Lest thou shouldest ponder the path of life, her ways are movable, that thou canst know them. Movable. Yes, see that? Slytherin. Movable. Not fixed. Beware, young people. Beware. <clears throat> Hear me now, therefore, O ye children, and depart not from the words of my mouth. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house. Who is behind the footsteps of some of these people? It's a woman who is a mother. Remove thy way far from her, and come not nigh the door of her house, lest thou give thine honor unto others, and thy years unto the cruel lest strangers be filled with thy wealth and thy labors be in the house of a stranger. And thou mourn at the last when thy flesh and thy body are consumed. Because the end justifies the means to these devils. They're using you for their future endeavors. And say, how have I hated instruction, and my heart despised reproof? And have not obeyed the voice of my teachers, nor inclined mine ear to them that instructed me. Who, are they, who is this talking about? Well, like I said, this woman, who is the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth? Rome, Mystery of Babylon the Great, Roman Catholicism, and her army, the Jesuit order. Rome is Satan's church. And a lot of these people, young man, young woman, a lot of these people that have just come suddenly. Are they really of the church of the living God? How do you know? Oh, because they can utter something? Yeah. 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 Go to Psalm 36. Go to Psalm 36. Psalm 36, verses 1 under verse 4. The transgression of the wicked saith within my heart that there is no fear of God before his eyes. For he flattereth himself in his own eyes until his iniquity be found to be hateful. He flattereth himself in his own eyes, deceiving himself while being deceived, thinking that they might be actually saved. But there are some out there who know that they are not, and just there to deceive and bring you on to the Vatican. A majority of those are the ones that are out there right now. The words of his mouth are iniquity and deceit. He hath left off to be wise, fear the Lord, and to do good. He deviseth mischief upon his bed. He setteth himself in a way that is not good. He abhorreth not evil. 
But unto them, what is evil? Oh, a serpent, the authorized version of the scriptures, according to the Jesuits? Yeah. They abhor not what is evil. But unto these people, what is evil is the authorized version of the scriptures. Are they, is this, is the scriptures your ground for fellowship? Who wrote the scriptures, by the way? Our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, the Holy Ghost. The scriptures are our only physical thing to connect unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But see, you got the Catholic coming in being all about the flesh and the little round cookie. <gasps> yeah. Remember, two plus two is four, not 36, young man, young woman. Okay? Psalm 55, just one verse. Psalm, Psalm 55, verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. But war was in his heart. War against the church of the living God. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords. Remember that. Psalm 57, verse 4. Psalm 57, verse 4. My soul is among lions. And remember, Satan himself walketh about as a roaring lion. And remember when our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, comes back at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble, he's going to be the lion of the tribe of Judah. So Satan is an imitation. Really? You don't say My soul is among lions, and I lie even among them that are set on fire. Set on fire. Meaning, they're bound to go to hell. Really? Even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. Hmm. Mm. Now, go to Psalm 64. Psalm 64. Hear my voice, O God, and my prayer. Preserve my life from fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongue like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect. Suddenly do they shoot at him, and fear not. Perfect does not mean sinlessly perfect. The perfect means that your heart belongs unto the Lord. You know, because you came to him on his terms with a broken heart. Okay? And it says, suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. Yeah, attacks will come at you out of nowhere. Sometimes they will blindside you. It's like, whoa, whoa. And then you look back, it's like, what did I do? Did I do something, Lord, to warrant this? That could be helpful sometimes to you to examine yourself, what you ought to do every single day. But more often than not, it is because you have made your choice to stand for the scriptures and adhere your life unto the scriptures. That'll bring all kinds of trouble upon your head. 
Praise the Lord for it. Praise the Lord for it. Hallelujah. They encourage themselves, verse 5, in an evil matter. They commune of laying snares privily. They say, who shall see them? They use trickery, traps, innuendo. They're really good at languages. Not just other tongues, but how to deceive through language. Sentence of uh, sentence structure. Hyperbole. Yeah. They're very good at that. Very good at that. Very good at that. Very good. They search out iniquities. They accomplish a diligent search. Both the inward thought of every one of them and the heart is deep. Yeah. Yeah. They search out iniquities. They look for dirt. That's all they do. They make a diligent, uh, diligent search. They'll go to all the ends of the earth to find dirt on one person, spirit, soul, and body. You need to be aware of this, young man, young woman. Now go to Jude. Go to Jude. Jude. Jude does not have chapters. Jude is right before the book of Revelation. We're going to skip around in Jude. Jude, verse 4. For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this con condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Lasciviousness, lustfulness. Okay? To turn the grace of God into lasciviousness. And denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, you mean maybe be Trinitarians? Jude, verses 10 on to verse 13. But these speak evil of those things which they know not. But what they know naturally as brute beasts. And those things they corrupt themselves. Natural. Unregenerate. Not saved. Putting on an act. You know, a facade. Woe unto them. For they have gone in the way of Cain. And ran greedily after the heir of Balaam for reward. And perished in the gainsaying of Korah. And the reward unto the Jesuit. And the coadjutor. Is not necessarily always this. Remember uh, Jesuit coadjutor and Jesuit plant. Uh, the charismatic Catherine Clumen. Or whatever her name was. You know how she was rewarded by the Jesuits for doing all that uh, ecumenical stuff that she did way back when? She was an evil devil witch who's burning in hell right now. You know what her reward was? An audience with the Pope. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Catherine Clumen. For you care Catholics out there. You know who she is. Talking about the spirit, she was an ecumenical witch working for the Vatican. A Jesuit coadjutor. These are spots in your feasts of charity. 
When they feast with you, feeding themselves without fear, clouds they are without water, carried about of winds, trees whose fruit withereth, without fruit, twice dead, plucked up by the roots, raging waves of the sea, foaming out their own shame, wandering stars to whom is reserved the blackness of darkness forever. In Jude 16, under verse 19, these are murmurers, complainers. Do they harp on you about those who are of the church of the living God? People who they dislike and want to get, uh, rope you along to hate whom they hate? Oh, but they don't hate nobody, right? walking after their own lusts, and their mouth speaketh great swelling words, having men's persons, spirit, soul, and body, in admiration because of advantage. The advantage, young man, young woman, is you being young that these Jesuits and their coadjutors can come in and poison you to make you an enemy of our Lord, to make you distrust the scriptures. They come in to get your admiration so they can turn you into an enemy, to make you two, uh, fourfold the child of hell that they themselves are. But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. Sister sent me this thing about how she was uh, um, talking to an atheist who was doing nothing but mocking our Lord. And, and the sister, she, uh, you know, she, she did her part. Uh, but um, wow. Wow. <laughs> Are there not mockers? How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lusts. Some of these people say like, oh, I can't, I want to go to hell and have a party in hell. That's where all the friendly people are. Woe unto those who call evil good and good evil. Remember, church of the living God, because you actually care for the lost and don't want them to go to hell. You tell them the truth of the scripture you're the bad guy because you want to stand for the scripture and not conform to what the Jesuits have done. You're the bad guy. Remember? These be they who separate themselves sensual, led by the senses. Oh, like the five senses. Uh, five senses, like what Ignatius Loyola teaches in his spiritual exercises, the groundwork for all mind control, pretty much. Having not the spirit, but rather their spirit is the spirit of the devil. The Antichrist Spirit, or the spirit of Antichrist, excuse me. The spirit of Antichrist. It is already out there. The Church of the Living God just needs to be redeemed. And that man of sin, the son of perdition, will be revealed. And with what the Jesuits are doing right now, 
unto you young people. You're going to be his army. Now, now I'm going to read to you out of the Secreta Monita. Um, as I have come to find out, this is no longer available on my channel, even though I got the link for it. It doesn't work. Oh, gee, imagine that. Yeah, yeah. This is the Secreta Monita. This is the secret instructions of the Jesuits. You look up the history of this online, look into it, and see how attacked this is. And if you get a copy of this, okay, this one is has the Latin and the English in it. This is the one, uh, a copy, this is like a facsimile, a facsimile copy of the one that's in the British uh, Museum, okay? Uh, this is a hated book, too, okay? There are many translations of it, by the way. But when you read this and compare it to what the Jesuits do and have done and are doing, lines up perfectly, okay? Going to be reading to you a lengthy chapter in the Secreta Monita, Chapter 13, How to Pick Out Young Men to Be Admitted into the Society, and What Manner to Retain Them. Okay, this would be Chapter 13 in the Secreta Monita. Okay, now you can go to Amazon, I think, and still pick this up, I think. I think, okay? Now there is quite a lot to read here. I'm going to be reading this, okay? Now, like I said, on this side is Latin, this side is English, okay? So I'm gonna be reading this right here, okay? Pause that and read it. This is the English, okay? Also, too, let me put my bookmark in here. Going to be reading, uh, this side is the English, reading all of this, pause it and read it. Okay, this side, pause it and read it. This side, pause it and read it. And finally, right to here. Pause it and read it. If you can still get to it, because it does, it always did redirect uh, the link that's on, <clears throat> that's on my channel. But if you can still get the download for it, please do. Okay. Chapter 13 from the Secreta Monita, how to pick out young men to be admitted into the society and in what manner to retain them. Let us endeavor with the utmost prudence to pick out young men of a good genius and agreeable personages and noble family, or at least such as excel in some one of these that they may with greater ease be drawn to us. Let the masters who have the care of their instruction, both during and also after school time, by particular mildness, prepossess them in our favor, and insinuate how acceptable an offering it is to the Almighty, when any one dedicates himself and all that he has to him, especially in the society of his son. At proper opportunities, let them be entertained in our colleges and gardens, and sometimes at our country seats. Let them accompany our members at times of 
recreation, and by little and little be drawn into a familiarity. But however, with such proper cautions as may prevent it, its breeding in them contempt. Let not their masters be allowed to chastise, nor keep them in subjection as the other scholars. We're not judging you. Always sweet, always nice, never going to correct you. Sound familiar? Let them be allured by little presents, flatteries. Oh, I see great things for you. Oh, you, you're at such a young age. You have such insight. Oh, your talents could be used for the greater glory of God. <clears throat> oh, your, your talents could be used for God's glory. Yes. Let them be allured by little presents, presents, an indulgement of liberties agreeable to their age. Agreeable to their age. Get a load of that. Jesuits ain't stupid. They're very intelligent. They know how to rope you teenagers with things that appeal to you teenagers. You 20-something youngins out there, okay? Same thing. Don't ever underestimate the Jesuits. And above all, let their affections be warmed with spiritual discourses. Not the scriptures, but spiritual discourses. Talk about spiritual things, which usually never line up uh, with the scriptures, right? Or never go into the scriptures. Do these elders take the time to go with you into the scriptures? Huh? Or no, do they just have spiritual discourses? Young woman, young man, they ain't guiding you at all into the scriptures, okay? If they're not saying, hey, Let's get the scriptures. Let's pray to the Lord and let the Lord open our understanding to understand the scriptures and let's, let's see what the scriptures say. No, 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 no. It's spiritual discourses. Because remember, the Jesuits hate the scriptures. And the Jesuits know that the scriptures is against them. I proved that in a video of mine, which I will link in this video. Let it be inculcated that their being chosen out of such a number rather than any of their fellow collegiates is a most pregnant instance of divine appointment. Again, flattery. Let it be inculcated. Let it be known unto them that they're being chosen out of such a number. All the young people out there, they chose you because you're so special. You have a bright future for the greater glory of God. Sound familiar? On other occasions, but especially in exorations, let them be terrified with the nuncions of eternal punishment unless they accept of the heavenly invitation. You're kind of afraid to cross these people, aren't you? Not because of they are of the church of the living God, but you are aware of how they can attack other people. Is that fear of the Lord? They use eternal punishment as a crutch, as a weapon, not as something to bring you on to the fear of the Lord. Because remember, 
Jesuits are devils. Unless a Jesuit can get out of that and get truly saved of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hmm? Yeah, let's continue. The more earnestly they desire admission into our society, the longer let the grant of such favor be deferred. Put it off. You're, you're almost there. Oh yeah, we're still doing this. Yeah, well, yeah, it's just taking a little longer. Can we can we spend some time in the scripture? Oh, I got some things to do. Oh, I'm not feeling good. I'm just not in the mood. Oh, I don't want to talk about it right now. You know, young man, young woman, you're to be Bereans and search the scriptures daily whether these things be so. Try them out. Try out your elders whom you look up to. Try them out. On the spot. The more earnestly they desire admission into our society, the longer let the grant of such favor be deferred, provided at the same time they seem steadfast in their resolution. But if their minds appear to be wavering, let all proper methods be used for the immediate fixing of them. Give them a little, uh, a little nugget. You, you want to spend time with someone who you consider an elder, someone who you think is bringing you on in the nurture of the Lord, never going to the scriptures with you at, uh, at anything, but okay. And you press them and they, and you press them and they keep saying, no, no, no. And then you're starting to get a little questionable. Then they turn the switch. It's like, okay, well, let's, let's look at something. And they give you that much. It's a morsel. It's a baiting tactic. Also used by used car salesmen and people who sell vacuum cleaners. Okay? Forgive me. Forgive me. Let them be strictly cautioned not to make the least discovery of their call to any intimate friends nor even so much as to their parents before they are become one of us. Are those who are your elders admonishing you to stand strong in the Lord? Are they admonishing you to trust on the Lord and go out there as soldiers? Well, the Jesuits, yeah, they're, they're soldiers. The army of the Pope. Hmm? Or do they keep it hush-hush? Yeah. Let them be strictly cautioned not to make the least discovery of their call to any intimate friends, nor even so much as to their parents, before they are become one of us. Before they are become one of us that if afterwards any temptation to fall off arises, both they and the society will be wholly at their liberties. And should we get the better of such inclinations, it will always be a handle from their past irresolution to stir them up to the firmer perseverances, perseverance for the future. If this happens while they are novices, or after they have made but simple vows. But since the greatest difficulty occurs in drawing in the sons of noblemen, persons of distinction, and senators, whilst they are under the wing of their parents, who endeavor to train them up to succeed in their employments, let our friends, rather than members, coadjutors, persuade them to send their children into their provinces 
and remote universities where in some of our order our tutors, private instructions concerning their quality and condition, being first transmitted, that they may be the better enabled by touching upon right strings to secure their affection to the society. When they are more advanced in age, let them be enticed to the performance of some spiritual exercises. Give you a little know-how on how to do what they do. Roll that around in your head a little bit. Their tactics, are they, do they line up with the scriptures? Hmm? Did our Lord ever use deceit? Did our Lord ever pretend to be someone whom he wasn't? When they are more advanced in age, let them be enticed to the performance of some spiritual exercises. This method having been, having been attended with very good success among the Germans and Polanders. In troubles and afflictions, we must administer comfort to everyone according to their several qualities and conditions. When you get something that cuts you, that makes you question what's going on, these devils come in with their fake with their flattery, their sweet words, and just try to coax you along. By laying before them how often riches are a curse to the possessors. I have esteemed thy word more necessary than my daily food. Oh, how I love thy law. Better than gold and rubies. And privately exhort them not to contemn the call of God, the doing which exposes the offender to no less a penalty than that of hellfire. That parents may more readily can condescend to their son's desires of becoming members of our society, it will be highly expedient to extol the excellence of its institution in comparison of that of all other orders, the sanctity and learning of our brethren, the unspotted character they maintain among all, and the universal honor and applause they meet with everywhere, from persons of all qualities and degrees, having men's persons in admiration. Oh, to them, no, but to you. The following the script. Let an enumeration be made of the princes and noblemen who, to the great comfort of their souls, lived in the society of Jesus and are dead and yet live. Yeah, in hell. Let us shew that nothing is more pleasing to God than that young men should devote themselves entirely to him, especially as companions in the society of his son by the precepts of men. <laughs> oh. My, my, my heart really goes out to so many of you young people. And, and, and brethren, Church of the Living God. Yeah, YouTube is 
their property. And yes, they can do what they see fit. But if you are doing something for the Lord, who's greater? Reach out. Take the risk. They're going after the kids. And those of you young people, you get into the you get into the scriptures. You seek the Lord. The Lord will use men. Yes, he will. But you seek the Lord. You search the scriptures. Okay? See, so the, the, the enemies are so busy attacking in Church of the Living God. Yes, the Titanic is sinking. But man, I don't know about you, but as she's going down, I'm putting coal in that boiler to keep the lights on as long as possible. And you don't have to do it here. You can do it out there. In whatever capacity the Lord has put you in. You understand? And that it is one of the greatest felicities for a man from his youth to bear the yoke of the Lord. But if any difficulties be started by reason of the tenderness of their age, let the easiness of our institution be explained, which contains nothing in it very difficult to be observed, except the keeping of three vows. Chastity, obedience, and poverty. Poverty, chastity, and obedience. And of course, the fourth vow is the extreme oath of the Jesuits. And which is very remarkable, not only one rule, whose non-observance would be the commission even of a venial sin. Hmm. Hmm. So you see, young person, The Jesuits have made it their goal to go after you. And today, and today, in this social media thing, wasn't like it used to be when computers and stuff like that was, wasn't so readily available. Nowadays, the kids, you know, are all on this, this thing, you know, and whatnot. Um, yeah. Like our president Kamala Harris said in her one video that the kids today tell us old farts how to operate things. That's, that's true. And those of you who are of my age, you can kind of get that. <laughs> but, the, but there again, remember, there are people who are older than me who actually know more about what to do on this computer stuff than some of these kids. That's scary. Why is that? Well, because number one, that's what they're, they've had plenty of time to become so um, conversant with computers, probably trained, most likely, because remember all the information that the Jesuits gain are now contained in supercomputers. Well, they have all those underground um, tunnels that have all this information on <laughs> everybody, pretty much. Underneath the Vatican, they have all these tunnels that go for miles and miles in a circle, spread out all over. They got it in supercomputers now. They gather information. They gather information. See this? This is the Ducat. What is this? What to do? This is the companion of the Ucat. The youth catechism of the Catholic Church. And I want to show you something. See where my finger is? Uh, can you see that? 
Hey, wait, 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 wait. Can you see that right here? That's IHS. Isis Horus Set. Or is that the Egyptian Trinity? IHS is the sign of the Jesuits. The Jesuit will tell you it means Jesus, Hamadan, Salvatore. Jesus, man's savior. Blah, no. Isis, Horus, Set. Nimrod, Semiramis, Ninus, and or Tammuz. This was put out by the Jesuits. I've covered this in a video called the... Um, Psychological Warfare Tactics and the Media. I've covered this before. In that video, uh, if I can remember, I'll link it in this one. Um, that video, get a little bit more into psychological warfare tactics. But this, this, I'm going to do a little reading here. Okay. This, this is, <laughs> this is, okay. Yes, going to do some reading here. This is in the Ducat. Okay. Going to read all of this, okay? All of this. Pause it and read it, if you can. Pause it and read it, if you can. Pause it and read it, if you can. Look, look at that. Look at this one. Look at this. Look at this. Look at that. You see that? Jesuits? Catholics on YouTube? <gasps> no, you wouldn't say. <laughs> yeah. And finally, that's the last one right here. Can, can you see? Oh, oh, there. Okay. What are the media for? When direct communication is not possible, we use the media as indirect providers of information and as platforms for exchange and discussion. The media serve to educate, Inform and entertain, with the entertainment aspect often outweighing the others. Without the media, we could organize neither our private life nor the complexity of our modern society. We make a pretty good, me and my wife do a pretty good job of doing that without the media. The media are like the communicative cement that holds society together. And you put the mark of the beast technology thing into this equation. And, oh boy. The larger and more complex the society, the more urgently we need the media. And through the media, you know, you look at World War II about how the Catholics through Roman Catholic Hitler, with all their propaganda through the media. Look at the propaganda that they're using today. Hello? Okay? Yeah. Yeah. The more urgently we need the media to control people. It doesn't say that, of course. A democracy especially cannot function without the free exchange of opinions and information and without the participation of all. And Roman Catholicism is anti-democracy. Anti-democracy. Remember, Roman Catholicism is a dictatorship, not a democracy. Okay? Then you got that twit duck commander, Phil Robinson, who made that one video where he called pretty much Catholics Christians. And yeah, they are. Yeah. Yeah. Just another puppet of the Vatican, that old man is. Him and his family. Tell him I said so. 
How does the church see the media? The media are necessary building blocks of modern societies. They are not ends in themselves, rather as social means of communication. Get a, look, get a bit of some of the sophistry that you're going to hear in us reading, in me reading this on to you. Answering questions without answering questions. Play on language and linguistics. Catholics are really good at that. Especially, of course, the Jesuits. They serve people and help them to understand one another. But they're not an end in themselves. The media and those who make them available and, dis and distribute them have an ethical responsibility. And uh, as I found out uh, a little while ago that the big pornography companies, uh, and thanks to a sister who sent me this, are owned by a Jesuit. Go figure. Yeah. They must direct their activity toward the goal of mutual understanding. What fosters this understanding? What impedes it? <laughs> Uh, how can man and his social relations be promoted? What developments serve the common good? Community, communism, common good. For example, the freaks change of news and opinions. <laughs> the Pontifical Council for Social Communications, which was founded in 1948... 1948, that's a significant year. What else happened in 1948? I'll let you figure that one out. Deals intensively with the questions, one, how can the faith be proclaimed in an appropriate way in the media? And two, how are the media to be used correctly? <laughs> oh, look at what's happening today. The ends justify the means. What is the church's attitude toward the social networks? Get a load of this. First, I'm going to read this quote here. By Claudio Maria Selle, president, a 1941 president of the Pontifical Council for Social Communications. The digital space is said to be open. Free and peer-to-peer, -peer, it does not automatically recognize or privilege the contrib contributions of established authorities or institutions in this environment. Authority has to be earned. It is not an entitlement. The internet and above all the social networks are regarded as an important extension of the possibilities for communication. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth <clears throat> Beg your pardon. Beg your pardon. Don't have my garbage can. I should have. Pope Benedict the Sixteenth repeatedly took up this theme. Thus he says, the new technologies allow people to meet each other beyond the confines of space and of their own culture, creating in this way, an entirely new world order, excuse me, new world of potential friendships. This is a great opportunity, but it also requires greater attention to, to an awareness of possible risks. Benedict XVI message for the 45th World Communications Day 2011. Just like as the media, however, the social networks, too, should serve the common good in human development. Common good in human development. When it's the Jesuits that run them. Look what's happening in the media right now, today. What are they telling you? What are they pushing? Oh, for, all for the common good. That's Catholic. Pope Benedict, <clears throat> beg your pardon, 
calls for serious reflection on the significance of communication in the digital age. As a matter of principle, communication on social networks takes the form of a dialogue. Dialogue! With so many of the enemies of our Lord, these infiltrators, these uh, coadjutors, use that phrase. We want to open dialogue with each other. Dialogue. Dialogue. Yeah. Yeah. You shall know them by their fruits. This is a great opportunity for the church to realize her potential as a communio or fellowship. Pope Francis <clears throat> has a Twitter account. <laughs> At Pontifex, which Pope Benedict started in early 2016, he had 26 million followers. And they all see him as Jesus Christ, the vicar of Christ, another Christ. 26 million people follow the Jesuit, Pope Francis. Get a load of that. What is the digital divide? Oh, excuse me. Here's a quote. Social networks, as well as being a means to, of evangelization, can also be a factor in human development. What did we read in the Secreta Monita? They're going after you kids. And that was from Pope Benedict XVI. Message for the 47th World Communications Day 2013. What is the digital divide? The noblest goals, goal of all social media is universal participation in shaping public affairs. On the internet and in the social network, some people are excluded from the start. <laughs> yeah, like uh, authorized version of the scripture, believers, church of the living God. For if for structural, financial, or personal reasons, they have no access to the internet, or if they cannot use it com competently, in order to avoid... The, con the exclusion of individuals or groups, the digital divide. The church, get a load of this. The church repeatedly calls for universal access to means of social communication and a pro prohibition of monopolies and ideological supervision. If the exclusion affects the elderly, the unemployed, and people with less formal education, it is more correct to talk about a social divide, which absolutely must be overcome. They want everyone connected, you know, you, uh, eventually to be in their right hand or in their forehead. This, therefore, this is a question not only about communicating, but also about overcoming unjust structures that exclude individuals or groups from information and thus from education and development. Exclude. They want to bring everybody together, just like at the Tower of Babel. Bring everybody in. Get rid of distinction. God likes distinction. What is the... <laughs> What is the right way to use the media? Using the media sensibly is a challenge for every individual. Even with the classic mass media, news, newspaper, radio, television, one must decide what to be concerned about. Merely passive consumption often leaves the user, in quotes, feeling sad and spiritually empty. In this regard, parents, teachers, or youth group leaders youth group leaders have a particular responsibility. They must model for children and young people a disciplined way of using the media and acquaint them with media that are enriching. 
Get a load of that. In the case of the digital media, a new level of responsibility is added, especially in social networks. One is no longer just a passive recipient who receives what others have produced, printed, or sent. One can at any time be active also as a producer, like or comment on something, or else post a message, a blog entry, a video, or a photo online. Thus, one has a responsibility comparable to that of any other media producer. And yeah, the Jesuits are sending multitudes of stuff out there. Their, their coadjutors are out there. Get, this is from the Catholic Church, the Jesuits. Get a load of who is saying this. Okay? Hello, people. Okay? What responsibility do I have in using the media? <laughs> Get a load of this. And here, here, here's again, here's that picture. And look, look right there. You see that? Look at that picture. <laughs> the social media can bring people together or lead them into isolation. Look what's happening right now today. And they want you to be drawn to this. Praise the Lord that there are still those of the Church of the Living God who are putting up a fight and still being led to the Lord to put stuff out there. Praise the Lord that he's allowing those who once did to have his stuff still remaining. They can help people be better informed, enrich and inspire them, or seduce them to evil. What we do and permit in the media and the social networks ought to serve the purpose of all human communication, overcoming the confusion of languages at, ba at Babel, Genesis 11, 4-8, and coming to an understanding of all by the Spirit of God. Overcoming the confusion of languages at Babel. Genesis 11, 4 through 8. And coming to an understanding of all by the Spirit of God. Look at this. Okay. It's where my finger is. Okay. Okay. Pause that and read that. You see that where my finger is? You know what they're saying there? They want to undo the confusion of Babel. What happened at Babel? They all got together. Okay? Everybody got together. I did this, I believe, in the previous one video about um, psychological warfare uh, tactics and the media. I believe I did this also in that video. But, of course, because that just chased my buttocks. Check this out. Go to Genesis chapter 11, okay? Yes, I did do this very thing. Can't help myself. God wants distinction. God wants separation. Deal with it, people, okay? Deal with it, okay? Because what happens when everybody gets together? Let's look. Genesis chapter 11, okay? Verses 1 and verse 9. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar. And they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. Whose top may reach unto heaven. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. 
Make yourself a name to be like gods. See, people get together. They make their and want to make themselves towers going to heaven. And let us make us a name. Lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Make us a name. A tower that goes to heaven. Ye shall be as gods. See, we all get together in unity like these devils want. Bring everyone together. Lose distinction. Lose separation. Lose variety. And bring everything together. They make towers to reach up to heaven. Ye shall be as gods. Right? Ye shall be like the Most High. What does the Lord think about that? And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Get a load of that. Get a load of that testimony of what happens when all men, man, gets together. Nothing can stop them. Except the Lord. Did you get that? Yeah. Go to, let us go down, and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build the city, then destroy it. Therefore the name of it is, uh, the name of it, therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth. We see, we all get together, and that's what we do. God likes distinction. Get over it. God likes separation. Okay? As pertaining to our salvation, there is neither Jew nor Greek, bond nor free, male or free, female. Today, in this dispensation, we are all one in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus, the church of the living God, those who are saved, born again, and converted. That isn't talking about culturally. You understand? <clears throat> okay. Let's continue this. The central ethical concept here is responsibility. Responsibility to God who wants us to help truth prevail and to seek one another in love, responsibility to our neighbor, who should be integrated, involved, and enriched through the social media. The end justifies the means, people. Responsibility to myself, since I should enter into true community with others through the media instead of shutting myself off in self-centered virtual isolation from other people and their real needs. What does ideal communication on the internet look like? <laughs> like that? <laughs> as desirable as it is for Christians to conquer the digital con continent, and to fill it with the light of the gospel. What gospel? The way in which they communicate must be set apart from the usual approaches. It makes sense for Christians to post messages and run blogs dealing with Christian topics. But if they denounce other people in them, if they slander, belittle, and condemn others, if they cause or support divisions, <laughs> then they are doing 
the opposite of what Pope Francis calls for in Evangelii Gaudium. <laughs> That's just what these coadjutors themselves do. <laughs> okay, okay. Look at them here on YouTube. Do they not all attack people? And not even bother with instruction? But constantly, well, I would do doctrinal studies, but I'm too busy going after heretics. Oh, because you're a part of the Inquisition? <laughs> when are you going to wake up, young people? These people are of the Jesuits. The ones who are constantly attacking. Constantly, that's all they do. The joy of the gospel is for all people. No one can be excluded. This applies also to the presence of Christians in the social media. It is virtually important for the church today to go forth and preach the gospel to all, to all places, on all occasions, without hesitation, reluctance, or fear. Now, okay, esoteric, esoteric. What does that mean? One for the general public and one for the initiated, the in, the, those who are in the know. Generally, Christians, go out there. Christians, go out there. Jesuits, go out on your on the social media and do the work for the greater glory of God. Damn. People to hell. Are there good media and bad media? Get a load of this. Get a load of this one. Get a load of this. Media as such are good, but they can be used badly. Some are more useful, others less so. It always depends on one's purpose and how one uses them. One can employ media in such a way that the result is nothing but meaningless entertainment and useless information. Thereby, one can, one can keep people away from real life. Media owners can exploit the media by deliberately inducing addictive behaviors in media users. By using flashing lights, certain sounds, binaural beats, okay, certain color patterns, swooshes, okay. The media are becoming more and more commercialized. They often degenerate into cheap stimulants that distract from a dreary world without hope. Yeah, because when all this stuff went on, look, look it up yourself about how pornography usage whoom, skyrocketed and a Jesuit is, an, is the owner of a majority of the bigger pornography sites. Hello, two and two equals four, not 36. Oh no, according to the Jesuit, yeah, two plus two does equal 36, doesn't it? Yes, it does, okay? People often go on the internet for content that glorifies violence and even more often for pornography. Providers, therefore, are always developing new forms of presenting media content, for instance, computer games and marketing strategies, so as to generate dependent and often addicted users. All this is an abuse of the media. Christians must, therefore, consistently avoid certain sorts of content, lovingly help, help individuals who are dependent on the internet especially young people, out of their misery. And here is a quote from Pope Francis. Disinformation means telling half-truths, <laughs> which they are masters of. The part that is most convenient to me, and not saying the other half, therefore, 
Those who watch telev the television or listen to the radio are not able to arrive at a perfect judgment because they do not have all the elements necessary to do so. And the media does not give them. Please shun these sins. <laughs> and the Jesuits are the ones that run the media. Look at the bravado of this. Okay? The Jesuits know that their plans are going to succeed. They are daring men. Okay? They are have the chutzpah, the stones, not only to run the media, but boldfacedly speak against what they themselves are doing. Call the enemy what you are and always speak the opposite of the truth. Where do you think Lenin got that from? Huh? I did that video, uh, Psychological Warfare Tactics and the Media, what, what, a year, two years ago? A little bit more uh, pertinent for today, ain't it? Ain't it? We're almost done. How can we protect the media from being misused? <laughs> Misuse of the media should be decisively counteracted. Markets need freedom. <laughs> oh, read uh, Revelation 18 on your own time, please. But they also need to set more goals. Those who offer access, services, and platforms and required are required more than ever to accept the ethical standard of the common good and human development. The devaluation of human sexuality, especially the distribution of child pornography, is a much too serious abuse for those responsible to keep ignoring it. Just as unacceptable are all forms of cyber mobbing. <laughs> they openly condemn it, but secretly they practice it. And disturbances that are becoming widespread based on the, avail the ability to use the internet anonymously. Again, they speak against it, but yet they send all their coadjutors out and doing the same thing. With regard to the danger of possible misuse of data by companies like Google, Facebook, etc., or even by governments, it is important not to reveal online everything about oneself and not to use a smartphone for picture selfies or an into of an intimate source. Yeah, because if you do, the Jesuits will surely get it. Let me, you know, a lot of people will say, oh, they, the Jesuits don't matter, deal with the small fry. That's a lie. They want to rule the world. By the volition of a single man, that man of sin, the son of perdition. You're online at all? At all? I can guarantee you, the Jesuits are at least aware of you. And how many of them, how many people out there have actually bowed their knees onto these people? Not me, man. Must the church go along with every technical development? <laughs> okay, check this out. This is this is good. Sci <laughs> Science and technology are a magnificent product of God-given creativity. Yet progress is not an end in itself, and just because something is, and just because something is new does not automatically make it good. Every development has to be tested to determine whether it serves man and thus the common good, and whether instead it does disregards human dignity because it touts deceptive 
values and or causes dependency. And right over here it says, do not be afraid to become citizens of the digital world around us. Pope Francis, January 23rd, 2014. Now, with what I just read, uh, must the church go along with every technical development? Did he answer the question? No. They shadow boxed. Sophistry. Jesuit trickery is what that is called. Oh, Jesuit mind trick. Like neuro-linguistic programming and such the like. Did that answer the question? Or does that leave you scratching your head? They're going after you young people. And because of all of this, okay, all of this, and all these coadjutors, and all these who are influencing you young people, and telling you good is evil, and evil is good. Go in the scriptures to Proverbs chapter 30. And here's the result of massive Jesuitical infiltration and influence of the media which they possess and they control. Here's their end game. To make you, young people, subservient unto them. Proverbs 30, verse 11, on to verse 17. Here's what they want. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes, and their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The horse leech hath two daughters crying, give, give. There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things say not it is enough. The grave and the barren womb. The earth that is not filled with water, and the fire that saith not, it is enough. The eye that mocketh at his father, and despiseth to obey his mother. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out, and the young eagles shall eat it. Now with the generation of young children being brought up today through social media, and through all these Jesuits and coadjutors, and there are those of you young people out there who actually do take up an interest in searching the scriptures, then they come after you, just like Satan does. What's the point of that? Do you have a generation that are clean in their own eyes and not washed of their filthiness? And notice here in Proverbs 30, ah. Uh, in verse 14, there is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. Hold your place there and go back to Psalm 55. Okay, Psalm 55, verse 21. The words of his mouth were smoother than butter. But war was in his heart. His words were softer than oil, yet were they drawn swords? Train up a child in the way he shall go, should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. You be very careful, young man, young woman. You be very careful. Please. Please. And... Psalm 57, 57, verse 4. My soul is among lions 
And I lie even among them that are set on fire, even the sons of men whose teeth are spears and arrows and their tongue a sharp sword. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. That's what the Jesuits want to do with you young people. They want to silence the ones who have the courage to speak. But they also want to keep down and control and bring on to them the ones who are seeking to make you an enemy of the Lord. Because, now go to Isaiah chapter 3. Isaiah chapter 3. Verses 1 under verse 12. Isaiah chapter 3, verses 1, on to verse 12. For behold, the Lord, the Lord of hosts, doth take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. Specifically, doctrinally, dispensationally, written on to the Jewish people, for our instruction in righteousness, you here who are in America, whatever nation you are in, Famine is coming. Hello. The mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of 50 and the honorable, honorable man and the counselor and the cunning artificer and the eloquent orator. Oh, they can sure speak good, can't they? And I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. Children. Children who are being brought up today, right now, by the Jesuit order, through the media. Through their coadjutors. Using flattery. Buttering you up. They don't care about you, young man, young woman. They want to use you as part of the Black Pope's army. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. You tell me, Church of the Living God, you have not encountered that outside your door with what these people are seeing on the television, the feminism, especially in my nation. When a man shall take hold of his brother of the house of his father, saying, Thou hast clothing, be thou our ruler, and let this ruin be under thy hand. You have stuff that covers your outside. What about the inside? In that day shall he swear, saying, I will not be an healer. For in my house is neither bread nor clothing. Make me not a ruler of the people. For Jerusalem is ruined, and Judah is fallen, because their tongue and their doings are against the Lord to provoke the eyes of his glory. Hello, America. Hello, Canada. Hello, England. Hello, Australia. Hello, Europe. Hello, Mexico. Hello, Spain. The shoe of their countenance doth witness against them. And they declare their sin is Sodom. They hide it not. Woe unto their soul, for they have rewarded evil unto themselves. Say ye to the righteous, they shall be well with him, for they shall eat the fruit of their doings. Woe 
unto the wicked, it shall be ill with him, for the reward of his hand shall be given him. Don't you ever forget that, young man. Hopefully you wake up before it's too late, young man, young woman. Because those who are deceiving you, those who are bringing you into captivity under the Vatican, they're going to reap what they sow one day. We just pray that you wake up before it's too late. As for my people, children are their oppressors. Oh, aren't they? And women rule over them. Who's our president? Never mind. Who really is the president of this country in America? O oh, my people, they which lead thee cause thee to err and destroy the way of thy paths. Proverbs chapter 4. We're almost done. My favoritist of the Proverbs. This proverb means personally the most to me. Sorry about that. Proverbs chapter 4. Hear ye, children, the instruction of a father. And attend to no understanding. What is understanding? To depart from evil. For I give you good doctrine, forsake ye not my law. For I was my father's son, tender and only beloved in the sight of my mother. Kind of quite a contrast from what we looked at in uh, Proverbs 30, verses 11 on to verse 17, isn't it? He taught me also and said unto me, Let thine heart retain my words. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Keep my commandments and live. Get wisdom, the fear of the Lord. Get understanding. Depart from evil. Forget it not. Neither decline from the words of my mouth. Where are the words of our Lord's mouth? Right here, the authorized version of the scripture. Forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall, per and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And with all thy getting, get understanding. Isn't it beautiful? That wisdom is likened unto a beautiful woman. The fear of the Lord is a treasure, something beautiful. Compared as unto a beautiful woman. And it says here, wisdom, the fear of the Lord, is the principal thing which none of these evil devils have. Oh, the devils also believe and tremble. Yes. But remember, they're fighting against him. Therefore, get wisdom, the fear of the Lord. And with all I get in, get understanding, depart from evil. Exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee to honor when thou dost embrace her. She shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. Hear, O my son, and receive my sayings, and the years of thy life shall be many. I have taught thee in the way of wisdom. 
I have led thee in right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it. Pass not by it. Turn from it and pass away. Uh, that's, under, that's called understanding, young people. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. It always amazes me how late a lot of these devils are up working on the media. For they eat the, the bread of violence and uh, for they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. The bread of wickedness, the bale shaped sun shaped cookie and the wine of violence, Catholicism. <laughs> I'm not saying, I'm just saying, of course. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at what they stumble. My son, attend to my words. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them. And health to all their flesh. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. What are the sayings of our Lord? How shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. That's Beth. Okay? Go find it. Verse 22. Uh, no, 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 hold up. My son, attend to my words. His words. Where are his words? The authorized version of the scripture. Incline thine ear unto my sayings. Where are the sayings of the Lord? Authorized version of scripture. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. I have hid thy word in my heart that I sin not against thee. Oh, you know, I keep... To, okay, Psalm 119. Uh, Gimel, Beth. Beth. Psalm 119, Beth. Verses 9 on to verse 16. Okay? Go back to uh, Proverbs 4. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thine eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find them and help to the, all their flesh. Beth. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed thereto according to thy word. With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hid in mine heart that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Verse 23 in Psalm, uh, Proverbs 4. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a froward mouth and perverse lips put far from thee. I'm telling you, young people, 
These coadjutors, they sound so sweet. Wait till they get angry. Have you made them angry? <laughs> they, 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 they can't keep up that facade for so long, young people. But see, you got to remember too, you got to give, brethren, we have to give these enemies this. They're very crafty. And they take steps to hide. But some of them just can't control themselves. <laughs> Hence, their greatest weakness. And you children, you need to be aware of these things. Let thine eyes look right on and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Straight before thee. Don't meddle back there. Which is something the devils like to do. They like to, they make a diligent search. They look for filth. That's all they do. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder, think. Ponder the path of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. For broad is the way that leadeth to destruction, and narrow is the way that leadeth unto life. Proverbs 6, verse 20 on to verse 26. Final exhortation to beware of mystery Babylon, Roman Catholicism, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, and her army, the Jesuit order. Remember, Rome is Satan's church, and the Jesuits are his army. And what the Jesuits are doing through the media and all this stuff and all their agents, they want you, young man, young woman. They want to turn you into the Proverbs 30, 11 through 17 generation to be as in Isaiah 3, verses 1 on to verse 12. And they're doing that through flattery. Through deceit. Who is warning you of these things? Proverbs 6, 20 on to verse 26. My son, keep thy father's commandment, and forsake not the law of thy mother. Bind them continually upon thine heart, and tie them about thy neck. Uh, about verse 20, wasn't wisdom just compared unto a beautiful woman? Obviously, yes, yes, actual mother and father, That yes, but think about that. If you are of the church of the living God, who is your father? Bind them continually upon thine heart and tie them about thy neck. When thou goest, it shall lead thee. When thou sleepest, it shall keep thee. And when thou awakest, it shall talk with thee. For the commandment is a lamp and the law is light. And reproofs of instruction are the way of life. To keep thee from the evil woman. From the flattery of the tongue of a strange woman. Mystery Babylon. Lust not after her beauty in thine heart. Neither let her take thee with her eyelids. For by means of a whorish woman. A man is brought to a piece of bread. And the adulteress will hunt for the precious life.
Somebody had to say something. Somebody has to say something to the young kids. We can't just ignore them. We can't just sit there and say, oh, let somebody else say something to them. I was young too once, you know. And I really wish that I would have ran into, or I, I did, looking back in retrospect, beloved. I really wish I would have been converted, saved, born again in a younger age. But see, the Lord had his own purpose. You, you kids, you youngins out there. You're the generation being raised up right now, today. And when it comes to issues of faith and practice, look at the, look at the mess that's out there. And look at people who say that we believe the King James Bible. But they're against scriptural repentance, brokenness and contrition. No prayer. And it's their, um, it's their crusade to bring down other people. <laughs> I, I, I do hope and pray that one of you youngins out there, I, I, I really do, and I know of a few of you. I do know of quite a few of you, actually. And I pray for every single one of you. Even one. Even one specifically. Young man. Even one. Who I still to this day pray for. The one who has led you is without hope, I believe, but you personally, I still hope. I still hope. I still hope. So, that's going to be it for this video. Somebody has to tell you these things. So, thank you so much for watching this if you do. And we will see you in the next video, whenever that will be, Lord willing.